So actually, I had a little help from Holly tonight in terms of not only warming me up on the table topics, but also using the term Googled. She Googled, and I thought of Alice Cooper too. When school's out for the summer, and this song just resonates in my head. I like Alice Cooper. My kids actually like Alice Cooper, believe it or not. So internet transformation is the title of my talk, and it's really focused on how the internet has transformed the way we live. Some people say better, some people maybe say worse. I say better. And the three aspects that I'm going to talk about in my speech are how the internet has given us the opportunity, not everybody's taken it, but given us the opportunity to be more educated consumers. The second aspect that I'm going to talk about how the internet's transformed our life is how the internet has provided us information, up-to-date information, in fact, that we can use to plan our daily lives, our vacations, our weekends, our day-to-day -day traffic. And then the third aspect in terms of internet transformation that has touched a lot of people, millions of people, is the facets of the internet that allow us to stay connected to friends and family. And so those three facets are what I'll focus on in the next four to five minutes. The first one I go back about 12 years when my son was born and for the first time in my life found the need to have a new automobile as opposed to one that barely passes inspection for safety reasons. And so I went about the process of what is a big purchase for most people, middle income people. And so I turned to the internet, my good friend the internet. And 12 years ago the internet was sort of new, Netscape sort of made it mainstream for everybody as opposed to Archie and Gopher and FTP, which I know Raj probably was an avid user of, possibly, although maybe you're too young for that. But this uh, internet brought me to admins.com, which some of you may be familiar with as a site. Admins.com provides information about vehicles, specifications, things like warranty information, test reviews, so that you can go and see what independent reviewers for those vehicles said. And I was able to actually, it was pretty excited, I was able to get some really useful information to negotiate with the dealer. And if you've ever dealt with car salespeople, you need information before you get to the dealer. <laughs> and so what I was able to do is find out the invoice price for the vehicle that I selected based on the information that I got. And for those of you that don't know, there's the MSRP, which is what the manufacturer suggested retail price is. That's what the dealer starts the discussion at. And then there's the invoice, which is what the dealer actually pays the manufacturer. There's also something called a holdback, which allows a dealer to sell you a car below invoice and still make money. So if you understand how those pieces fit together, kind of go in there and you name your price, they tell you they're not making any money, and then you pull out the printout and says, hey, this is the invoice, what are you talking about? You're not honest, I don't want to do business with you. And it's funny how you can drive the conversation, so knowledge is power. Lots of other instances, when I have a problem in the house, some kind of problem, I go to YouTube. I look on, someone's made a video of how to install a trailer hitch on a car, so, you know, figuring out how to splice into the wiring system. Something I would never try on my own without having the internet as my co-pilot. So, I think that kind of information is very powerful. The second aspect has to do with getting up-to-date information. So, I'm going to just do a quick poll here, make sure nobody's sleeping. Does anybody here use weather.com? Okay, I figured probably about half of the people use weather.com. And, you know, weather, it's what everybody's talking about, but nobody's doing anything about it. It's the old joke that people say. But weather.com is cool because you can go on weather.com, you can see hourly forecasts. So if I'm trying to get up to Lake George for AmeriCade on <laughs> Saturday and kind of get underneath the weather, I'm looking for a window of opportunity, I can actually look at the Doppler radar. I can even look at a future cast of the Doppler radar. So now they've got this cool new feature. Not only can I see the same Doppler radar that I might or might not see if I turn on the news, I can actually see what the computer models say is going to happen over the next six to eight hours, which is really cool. They're not always right, but then again, neither are the weathermen. But having that access to that just-in-time information on my schedule has really transformed the way that I'm able to plan my outings around the weather, for instance. And another aspect is also, I know there's some sports fans in here because some of the talks have centered around sports. Jerry, as I'm thinking of in particular, which was a memorable talk. Basically, there's been games that maybe it's not your favorite team, it's not the World Series, it's not the Super Bowl, but you care, but just not enough to stay up for extra innings. 
and you have an important meeting the next day, but you wake up and you're like, I wonder if my team won. Go on the internet. There's probably any number of sites that you can go to. You find that information, again, on your schedule. The information doesn't drive your life. Your life could be driven by access to the information. And then the third aspect, which I think is the coolest aspect, really, from a human standpoint. The other stuff's great for your consumer. It's great if you're trying to plan your weekend. But staying connected to your friends and family and people that you haven't seen in years and in some case, for me in particular, decades. People that I went to high school with that I fell out of touch with. Now I can find them. People you couldn't find in the phone book, but with 450 million Facebook users, you can pretty much have a safe bet that they're using Facebook. What's really cool about it is that you can decide who you want to share information with. And I know there's a lot of controversy about privacy, so I won't get into opening that can of worms. But the bottom line is, it's so easy now with a mobile phone. I'm guessing that half the mobile phones in this room, mine's not one of them, is able to take video, upload it with a press of a button to YouTube, share it with 350 of your friends. You know, I think average for Facebook's about 250 friends. And voila, you know, people know that you're standing in line at McDonald's. How exciting. <laughs> but it's more cool for baby pictures or just fun outings that you're doing. I'll wrap up by saying, again, the three aspects of my life that the Internet's transformed is my ability to be an educated consumer, my ability to get just in time, just enough information to be able to plan my life, and then the third is staying connected with friends and family. Thanks.